Hi everyone, Kelt here, bringing you a compilation of older videos and this is for my new subscribers who probably haven't seen a lot of my older videos. Um, there are quite a lot to scroll through. I think, I think it's around 600 odd now. I've sort of gone through and compiled some of these to give you an idea of what was going on between Meghan and Her Majesty the Queen, mostly. My other two compilation videos more recently have been to do with the alleged surrogacy and all the drama around Meghan's alleged pregnancies and births. So this one is more about the chess game and the battle, the battle of wills between Meghan and the Queen, mostly. I think there might be a few varied ones of when they were in Canada, but the, there was this ongoing battle going on from probably about 2019 onwards. It's sort of covering that. Anyway, enjoy for those who haven't seen these before. And for those of my older subscribers, enjoy looking back at some of this stuff and maybe even some of the speculation where we can see what actually was speculated and did end up actually happening. So enjoy. The first video is entitled Queen's MI5 visit. Does Meghan need to worry? Is there more to this? And this was published February 25, 2020. Hi everyone, Kelt here. Chris Ship this morning on Twitter saying that the Queen has secretly popped into the headquarters of MI5 this morning. Appropriate, you might think. The thing is, it wouldn't be a secret. She doesn't do anything secretly in that way. She, it wouldn't be out in the news if it was a secret, put it that way. She obviously wants us to know. And I think it's very appropriate. I think maybe this could be a warning shot, Megan, or maybe it could be to do with Andrew, or maybe both. It was purposely leaked to the press, so Chris Ship would not have reported it if he wasn't allowed to. So we can only wonder what that was all about and what's going on there. Also, bear in mind that Prince William was very involved with MI6. He was training with them or doing something, I think, some time back. I think it might have been about a year ago where he was sitting in on, I think, some sort of training with them and learning about the internet surveillance and phone calls and things like that. So it was said then that he was involved in watching over what Megan was up to because I think they were concerned at that time about what she was actually doing. Also, time of Kate and William, they it looks as if they will be off to Ireland halfway through Prince Harry and Meghan's return to the UK. So they're not going to hang around. So they won't be doing any engagements together, which is not surprising. Any contact between them is going to be kept to a minimum, it seems. So the Queen's visit to MI5 was to thank the spies for keeping the UK safe. So was she also checking on what they're actually spying on as well at the moment to keep an eye on her wayward granddaughter-in-law? She says, but on each of my visits to MI5, I have been impressed by the way that you have adapted to the changing threats to our nation. So the threat to our nation at the moment is Meghan and Harry with the way they've been treating the Queen. So what do you think? This is a short video and it's just interesting the stages that this is going through. She's already slapped down Harry and Meghan by taking away the royal from their merching. So, a warning, a warning to Meghan, a warning to Prince Andrew. Prince Andrew's gone quite quiet at the moment, and Prince Andrew's Pizza Express alibi has come under scrutiny. So they're really looking into this. He is, as far as I'm concerned, is innocent until proven guilty, but he is guilty of being friends with a paedophile who was trafficking underage girls, and possibly worse. He slept with a 17-year-old, and at the moment he is innocent until he's proven guilty. 
They are saying that Prince Andrew cannot be questioned by the FBI yet as the proper paperwork hasn't been filed. And apparently no one has written to the British Embassy to request an interview, according to the Embassy. The Prince doesn't seem to be volunteering to be interviewed as he was at the beginning. So this is being dragged out. I think the whole thing with Andrew is um, the tip of an iceberg and there's a lot of information online which you can Google whereby photographs of him on a yacht with a younger Marcus Anderson, Marcus being Meghan's best male friend, who has allegedly just moved in with her and Prince Harry. If Meghan and Prince Andrew do have a past, then it's going to be even more embarrassing for the royal family. Another thing which is um, being talked about today, and that is the way that Harry and Meghan are now talking about they fear for the safety of their child. So everybody was sort of thinking, oh, here we go, Meghan's safety. Then Harry's safety, and people were saying, does this mean something's going to happen to Harry? Now they're talking about the safety of their child and concentrating on that aspect of it. So there are people saying that this could lead to a possible kidnapping attempt made on Archie. Quite often they they start putting stuff out there and then surprise, surprise. Nothing would surprise me now. So not much more is happening. Not, Not that we can see. Maybe a lot happening behind the scenes. And now this next video is entitled Prince Harry and Meghan are at it again, only this time in Canada. Errand Boys Drama. And this was published on February, February the 2nd, 2020. Harry and Meghan were in Canada and driving the Queen to distraction with their behaviour. Well, it looks like Harry and Meghan are at it again. The Daily Mail is saying that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are treating their Scotland Yard protection officers um, like skivvies, they're sending them on errands, uh, picking up groceries and coffees. This is in Canada. And these highly trained protection officers have also been seen at an organic delicatessen. They've got a team of 15 guards, 15, just for two of them and one child. They've been flown reportedly to their Canadian bolt hole. Canadian security of Canadian security officers are also understood to be guarding the pair. So they've got 15 that have been flown out to them and they've got more Canadian security officers. And these and this is a couple who wanted to be like normal people and just live a normal, quiet, peaceful life. So these officers, highly trained Scotland Yard officers, are saying that they're being treated like skivvies and forced to do menial tasks like picking up takeaways and groceries. They've been seen allegedly buying food from an organic delicatessen, a favourite a favorite of Megan's, and picking up coffees from fast food outlet Tim Hortons. So they've been flown out there to guard Harry and Megan and Archie. But this is after they stood back from royal duties. So why do they need even more security than ever before? So this is costing taxpayers in Canada and the UK between three and six million pounds a year. And it, they, these staff are on 24-7. So a, a royal security source told The Sun on Sunday, while the guys are happy to be out there doing the jobs, there is a feeling that they are carrying out menial tasks, like picking up takeaways and groceries. And it's saying that they should be sticking solely to close protection rather than running errands. Because yes, if something happened to them, they would be the first to be blamed, wouldn't they? If they were out picking coffee, uh, picking up a cup of coffee, a takeaway or something, and somebody kidnapped Archie or somebody broke in or whatever, or somebody broke in and God forbid, took a photograph of them all. So they, they're they talking about wanting to be self-sufficient. No way. This is very reminiscent of last year when a royal pilot quit over Meghan Markle's diva antics, the paper said. This was a royal pilot, a helicopter pilot, who grew tired of making constant food trips um, when Meghan had these alleged food cravings and had to send this pilot out to get food for her. This article was saying that the royal family is being forced to recruit a new helicopter pilot after their veteran chopper captain 
quit over Meghan, Meghan Markle's diva antics. So this was a guy that obviously worked for them for a long time, highly qualified, being sent out just to get snack. And yeah, who can blame him? It says that, if you remember back then, that it says love struck Prince Harry was constantly ordering him to go and fetch weird snacks for the Duchess of Sussex until he finally objected to being used like an on-call 24-7 flying delivery service. So that year, Melissa, who was Meghan's personal assistant, she quit after only six months. And then the very next month, Samantha, who was private secretary to the Duke and Duchess, also resigned from her position. And then Amy Pickerill, she was another close aide to Meghan, and she left. It also says about an unnamed female security guard also left her position just six months after joining the royal couple. So it goes on, and now they're still annoying people, costing a fortune and acting like divas. She's not even in Hollywood yet. She's not even in any movie. And it looks as if she was allegedly going to appear in a reality show of Jessica Mulroney's, whereby they help people with second marriages. And now it seems as if it's not true that Jessica Mulroney's husband has says that she's not going to be in it. Sounds very much as if Meghan was saying she was in a way that she did with saying that the Queen was making her a birthday cake last year and had invited her um, up to Balmoral, which wasn't true. And now we've got allegedly Jessica offering her some part in a reality show and Jessica's husband saying, oh, no, that's not happening. So is it Meghan putting this stuff out there? Next video is entitled Is Curse making Meghan and Prince Harry leave Canada. And this was published January, January the 27th, 2020. And this is another video from when Harry and his wife were about to leave Canada. Well, we've got people saying that Meghan and Harry's stay in Vancouver is cursed because of the land that they're on, that the land was native owned and People are saying that there's a curse on the land, which is why allegedly the person who owns this multi-million dollar mansion never lives there. And it would be the perfect excuse to come back to the UK, wouldn't it? That everything's going wrong while you're living in a place because of the curse on it. Because apparently it was sold for a few hundred dollars, bought by British colonisers almost two centuries ago. And they're saying that... Um, they only had a few hundred dollars for it because they didn't realise what they were doing then. So I think a few hundred dollars that many years ago would have been a lot of money. But I suppose it all helps, doesn't it? It helps them have a very valid reason for moving back again. And everything seems to have gone wrong since they've been there. Absolutely nothing to do with them, all to do with this curse of the land, allegedly. <laughs> Apparently the royal family are, are opening their arms to Prince Harry and Meghan again and saying that they are more than welcome back because of their fragility. So one article here, which is page6.com, is saying Royal Family prepping for Prince Harry, Meghan Markle's possible UK return. A lot of people up in arms about this in the comments. They're all throwing their hands up in despair. This article says worried senior royals are prepping a possible UK haven. Another one? For Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, fearing they are so fragile after Mexit that they may come running back to Britain, according to a report Sunday. The palace is very worried about the Sussexes because they are vulnerable outside the embrace of the family, a source close to the royal household. This source told the Sunday Times of London. They are making contingency plans in case the Sussexes suddenly turn around and say, can we come back under your wing? Harry's dad, heir to the throne, Prince Charles and brother Prince William are both reaching out to see if they want to return. They've only just gone. Stressing the couple would still be free of royal duties, the source said. So really having their cake and eating it, as many people are saying. They are phoning him and trying to talk to him and extending a friendly hand the source said, of their attempts to rebuild the relationship amid concerns of the severe strain that Harry is under. 
it's interesting that they talk about the strain that Harry is under because with all the photos, Meghan has been smiling and looking as if she's having a ball. Then we go on. Insiders believe that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's plans disintegrated over the backlash against Mexit, as well as the intense media scrutiny that they are facing in their current home in Vancouver Island in Canada. Well, there are many saying that it is absolutely obvious that Meghan phoned the paparazzi herself and the fact that she was looking into the camera and smiling. It would make anybody with any common sense see that she knew they were there and wanted them to be there. Anyway, it goes on. They're saying here that they want them to know that there's love and affection on standby and that a number of potential secluded UK hideaways are being offered for the couple and their son. Many people in comment sections are saying that yes regarding Harry but no regarding Meghan. That, but the thing is they have to welcome them both back regardless of how you feel about either of them. They have to be welcomed back both of them because they are a couple. Another article here, the Express. Royal worry, fragile Meghan and Harry could head back to the UK as Canada increasingly unsafe. So they're now saying that Canada is unsafe. How is Canada un more unsafe than the UK? It doesn't make any sense to me. But it's also saying, this article, Meghan and Prince Harry's new life in Canada is proving a worry for senior royals as they face greater intrusion than ever before, sources claim. The intrusion only happened because of Meghan wanting it to happen. She was smiling at the cameras. Do these senior royal family members realise this, that Meghan is calling the paparazzi herself allegedly? And is this their way of doing everything right and getting Harry back? This is what some are saying, and that they're offering to protect them both. It's They're actually appearing not to be doing anything wrong. And may, maybe Meghan doesn't want to come back. And by putting this offer out there, they will get Harry back. This is what some are suggesting. So if this is the case, then it's a very good move on the part of the Queen. Again, another good move. So under the terms of the deal, they will keep Frogmore Cottage as their British base. But they'll obviously repay the 2.4 million of taxpayers' money that was used to renovate. So... It goes on to say you see the way it has disintegrated over there in the last few days. So what has disintegrated? Their relationship or everything in general? Because there is talk that it is a savvy ploy to get Harry back and that Meghan has no intention of coming back. So it'll be interesting to see what unfolds from this. So Meghan said she found life in the royal family soul crushing. So does she want to come back to soul crushing? I don't see that the press in the UK are any better than the press in Canada. I think this is another move in the big chess game where the Queen can move, as we know, in any direction. All these videos can be found on my channel. Just go to the search box and put in the title of the video or part of the title. This next video is entitled Megan is banned from ro from royal grounds and needs a senior royal minder question mark October the 29th 2019 It's been said for many months actually that Megan has been banned from the palace grounds any of the palaces or the royal properties uh, Windsor Castle and Kensington Palace, Buckingham Palace, unless she's with a member, of, a senior member of the royal family. This most recent meeting sort of confirms that. And the comparison with Catherine, when she holds a meeting on palace, grand, palace grounds, she has quite a grand room. She doesn't have another royal there to oversee her. And we know that Prince Harry wasn't supposed to be there at the meeting and Meghan joked that he crashed the event. This sort of proves it for me. What do you think? It has been said also that she allegedly was kicked out and banned from entering inside Kensington Palace, the building itself. She was allowed to continue to live in Nottingham Cottage on Kensington Palace grounds. That was some time back before Frogmore. And it was all connected to do with allegedly her taking photographs in Kensington Palace with a view to selling them and was kicked out and taken to the airport. So the very fact that she had also her book opening 
where her mother, Doria, attended the event. She didn't have it in Kensington Palace. Um, it was in a marquee in the grounds. And again, Harry was there. He wasn't supposed to be there, but he was there. And he was messing around that time. This sort of confirms it, this last meeting, I think. And she's sort of acted quite humble, as if she's welcoming people to a sort of lesser place for the meeting. And she was very, very confident. Harry, not so much. He wasn't looking particularly happy. And so she has to have a minder whenever she's on palace property. It's happened so many times now that I think it is probably true. Then we have Alan Jones, the number one breakfast radio show, who is saying that Meghan and Harry have no awareness at all. I think Harry has awareness, but I think he's very much controlled. And I think Meghan actually doesn't have any awareness. I agree on that. Wow, he's really speaking out here. Alan Jones in Australia, he attacks Meghan and Harry over a new documentary. And we know that a lot of stuff went on in Australia, a lot of the really bad behaviour. Alan Jones has attacked Meghan Markle after she admitted struggling with life in the spotlight in a new documentary featuring her husband Harry. Goes on to talk about what she'd said in the interview. And then he says he took to the airwaves on Monday morning to criticise the couple and said that the documentary borders on insulting and yet Meghan was carrying on. And he says, imagine spending time in Africa around the poorest of the poor, people who have no possessions and you're carrying on. Have these two people got no awareness at all, he asks. He also lambasted her for having six weeks off before Christmas for a holiday in Los Angeles. So where is this all headed? She doesn't seem to be bothered by the fact that she has to, she's always had to have a minder on palace grounds. I would have thought it was quite humiliating. Another article in Tatler talks about her best jewellery looks and we know that most of them were cheap and it's even being said that the nothing was from the crown, that even the tiara that she wore was a copy. I think after Her Majesty saw her behaviour, I would imagine that there are replicas of all the royal jewellery and it's been said that Meghan was given a replica of Queen Mary's tiara for her wedding. And we know that the butterfly Diana earrings were definitely replicas. I did another video on that and I'll put a link at the end of this video. So, banned from wearing any royal jewellery from the get-go basically, from, from when she first joined the family and banned from being on palace grounds without a member of the royal family. That doesn't really bode well for somebody who's wanting to be accepted by the royal family and by the, the country that she's moved into. This next video is entitled Is the Meghan Markle debacle almost over? And this was published July the 29th, 2019. I think we need to have patience about all this. Uh, there's stuff happening. I've heard a few things and I've read a few things and... These are my thoughts on it. The cover-ups are many and more people are noticing. One, the feigned interest in the bowls. This is all a ploy to make it seem as if they're living there. I really don't think they are. Number two, the neighbourhood Ten Commandments. Those were Those rules that were put out there, whether it was by them or not, it's still implying they live there. Number three, the organic garden plans. Four, the ever-changing decor. Five, the changing restoration work, demolition and more restoration farce. These are all to make the public think that they live there. It's looking like the Queen's chess game is reaching its conclusion. She has allowed Meghan enough freedom and she has painted herself into a corner. It's obvious that Prince Charles has cut the financial flow to the pair. He, I don't believe he's cut Harry off. He's his son. He wouldn't do that. But he's definitely drawing away from them in a professional way. The reason I think this, number one, thousands of comments all over the media demanding that he stop funding them. So why are we surprised that he's actually done it? He must have seen those or been told about them. So it hasn't fallen on deaf ears. 
Two, Her Majesty has never allowed Meghan to wear any royal jewels since the wedding tiara incident. Three, Meghan has had no more outings or joint appointments with Her Majesty since the first disastrous one over a year ago. And four, most royal events have seen Meghan tucked away to one side, pushed to the back, ordered to stay put, ordered to stay back from the royal family, ordered to wait, ordered to walk behind, and given the cold shoulder by many family members. Let's not forget all this. Meghan always fell back on the race card, but it won't work now because she allegedly, um, she is on the verge of cutting her mother off. And Doria was always her backup. If she cuts her mother off, then even the most diehard fans will have to admit that it must be something in Meghan's character which is off. It can't be everyone she has ghosted who are wrong. Maybe her mother is holding back from visiting her and getting involved and not always there when Meghan wants her because maybe she has had enough of the massive farce. So then, true to Anark's form, Meghan will cut off her mother before she could do it first. Then she can blame anything her mother might reveal as sour grapes at being cut off due to her not being there for Meghan or not supporting her and her marriage or whatever narrative suits her at the time. The Lion King premiere versus the deal remembrance the bad choice made by Prince Harry as to which to attend, and the large Disney donation. Other things which point to the beginning of the end. Number two, the large Disney donation. Perhaps this was, perhaps it was this which was the final straw for Prince Charles. It must have been obvious to him that his younger son had more than enough income from his various contacts and friends, and so it was easier to cut the apron strings. Let's also not forget the pregnancy, birth and subsequent bizarre happenings. Now it's easy for Prince Charles to let them go off on their own. No title for the baby, no apparent legal documents for the child, no named godparents, no confirmed DNA result made public yet, no public statement from the family about the baby ever unless it was very carefully worded in such a way as to not ever really acknowledge a child or passed off in a vague non-committal way. We've seen this throughout. Six, all the rest of the baby info was Meghan's PR and was drip fed to the media. And now the most interesting part of all, I think even more interesting than Charles cutting them off, the fact that Lord Geit has been offered um, a post as ambassador in Washington, UK ambassador. I think this is very significant and I hope he takes the job. Lord Christopher Geit, 57, may be the UK's next ambassador to Washington. The Queen's ex-private secretary, Lord Geit, is being eyed as Britain's next US ambassador. Lord Christopher Geit, 57, may be the UK's next ambassador to Washington. This is good news, if he accepts it, because I believe that the Queen has always been one step ahead. And this chess game that I spoke about in another video, it seems that... They've been quite clever all along and it's almost as if Meghan has been um, sort of given enough rope to hang herself, so to speak. And he's been keeping an eye on her. That's the reason why Her Majesty um, took him back into her employ was she always thought well of him, uh, was always very close to him. He, she w would take his advice and it was Prince Charles who wasn't happy with him. And I think also Andrew maybe. And she took him back in to work for her um, regarding keeping an eye on Meghan and Harry, I guess. Just think about it. If he's an ambassador living in Washington, if Meghan, as so many people are saying, is intent on being in her words, queen of the world, and wants to go um, and run for office in the United States with the view to becoming um, a female president. It is possible. You know, if people want to get her there, they will get her there. And I'm not saying it'll happen, but it's, it's almost as if, if the queen is playing this chess game and she's got her knight, if you like, over in another country where, let's face it, they might go to Africa Meghan and Harry might go to Africa, they might go here and there. Let's face it, it's very likely that they will end up living in the United States. Either Harry with her or not, you know. Prince Harry is still in line for the throne, albeit a lot further down nowadays. It's still important to the Queen. And the thing is, um, her grandchild, whether real or not, whether um, we've seen him 
in the flesh or not, will be living in America. And the Queen would want to have a say in his upbringing. I doubt that she would play the um, the custody thing, whereby she does actually have custody of all the uh, royal children. I imagine that she would be more likely to just she would be more likely to just want to keep an eye on on him and on them. It does make a lot of sense for someone like Lord Guite to be living in America and in a high position. I mean, you can't get a lot higher than that for somebody British living in America. Um, and the thing is, it would be the embassy would technically be British soil. Once you step into that embassy, you're on British soil, so to speak. And it would be, if you think about it, what could transpire from Meghan and Harry living in the States. It's not all going to calm down just because she goes out there to live. I think it would be just the beginning of it. Someone said, oh, Lord Guite is leaving his employ and going and possibly going to the States as ambassador. Maybe the Her Majesty has finished with him or he's not needed anymore. I totally disagree with that. I think it's just the start. And I think that it's all part of the big plan for him to be over there. So I think the Queen has got her chess pieces in play and I think we might be surprised at what happens. She is head of the Commonwealth and she has her people, so to speak, in various countries that Meghan could live in. Meghan is a possibility they could live in Africa. I, I doubt it. I think they will just go there and visit. Meghan always does what she wants, so I guess she'll go back to the States and try and be big over there. Who better to have than Lord Guite there in the embassy? I think this is getting very, very interesting and I hope he takes the job. Prince Charles has sort of cut them off and it's, I think it's, it's all happening behind the scenes. We don't see it all and I think just hang in there and let's see what happens next. Well, the news today is that Her Majesty the Queen has told Harry and Meghan that they are no longer allowed to use Sussex Royal in their branding. They're not allowed to use it for anything. I made a video back on the 7th of December 2019 showing t-shirts that I found on a sweatshirt with HRH on it that I found on Megan's website. Um, my video was asking, does the Queen know about this? I was just shocked at that time that they were doing this, that they were selling all these things with HRH on it and stuff. So I think this includes the symbol of the crown over the letter M. It's supposed to be H and M, but it looks just like an M on their Instagram page. Katie Hopkins did a really funny alternative, which I'll show you here. And when they were previously talking about removing Sussex from their name because the Council of Brighton and Hove were petitioning for Meghan and Harry to no longer be able to use the title of Sussex. Well, we now have Her Majesty the Queen taking away the royal from their title. I think it would be foolish of them to carry on with all the money that they've put in this, carry on using Sussex. You know, there are people saying they might call it Sussex Global, um, Sussex Family. I think it would be very unbusinesslike and very foolish to carry on using the name Sussex. So it sounds as if it's a definite move, a really good move by the Queen. After this announcement made by Her Majesty, Meghan goes straight on to their Instagram and updated Sussex Royal, still referring to themselves as Sussex Royal and HRH. Nothing has changed. It's almost as if she's hitting back at the Queen. Although the media is putting it out there that Meghan and Harry are fine with this, that they've, that they've accepted this. In reality, they're not. I've heard that they're basically having a meltdown, or rather Meghan is having a meltdown about this, regarding all the money that was ploughed into it, many thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands, into this, oblivious to the fact that it was likely that she would not be able to carry on using it. She's very angry about it, allegedly. And I've also been told that she's liable to hit out because of this and retaliate. Yet to see that happening and not sure what form it will take. 
although people are saying already that the very fact that she's carrying on using the name on the Instagram is really showing her contempt for Her Majesty the Queen. Another thing I wanted to point out here is that Prince Philip has not been happy with her taking the name Mountbatten and calling Archie or Mountbatten Windsor. He's not been happy with that at all and wanted it removed, allegedly. I was actually thinking, would she think about using the name Mountbatten to carry on their brand? So by Meghan naming Archie Mountbatten Windsor, it could have been a nice gesture for Prince Philip. It could have been her getting on his good side. But from what I've heard more recently, he is not happy with her having that name for Archie. He definitely wouldn't be happy with her using it as a brand. So it looks like it's checkmate for the Queen. And uh, Meghan can't use Mountbatten. She no way can use Windsor. And I think Sussex is very much on the out. So suggestions. What do you think she should call her new enterprise? And also, do you think that Harry may be getting an inkling that his wife is maybe more about titles and money than him, perhaps? I'll leave a link at the end of this video to the original video I posted at the beginning of December, questioning whether Her Majesty the Queen actually even knew about the HRH sweatshirts. It's been said that Meghan is very angry and that she is trying to get legal advice as to where she stands with this and whether she can take legal action against Her Majesty the Queen, which is unbelievable. She was given the title as a gift. Everything was a gift. The titles were a gift. Harry is a born royal. He will always be Prince Harry. No matter what happens, he is born a blood royal. Meghan is not. And the titles that she was given, they were all a gift and can be taken away just like that, leaving her as Meghan Markle. So I think she is either very brave, stupid, or very misled to be thinking about taking the Queen to court over this. One radio host, Talk Radio's Mike Graham, said that Meghan and Prince Harry had attempted to cash in on the royal brand, despite deciding to check out of the royal family. He said that they capitalised on being part of the royal family, despite having just left their roles, and said that it's a big surprise for them. So I don't know why it was a big surprise for Harry and Meghan when most of us could see that coming anyway. Do you remember the video that was put out on the internet before Meghan married Harry of her as a child? I think she was maybe about eight and she was at her friend's birthday party. The friend's mother was filming the children playing in their backyard and Meghan was wearing a crown. It was said that she had taken the crown off her friend, whose birthday party it was, and was taking over and pretending that she was a queen and that all the other children were her subjects. Lots of people were saying then in the comment sections on the internet, they were saying, oh, how sweet, you know, all children play at princesses or queens and kings and want to be a princess or want to be a queen when they grow up. But more and more people are now saying that Meghan seemed to take that fairy tale dream just that little bit too far. And the International Business Times are saying that but well, the title is this, Meghan Markle Fury, Harry's wife allegedly plotting revenge, having her own crown after Megxit. 
So this is saying that she is set to make Met Gala 2020 her crowning glory. It says that she's very eager to show who is the real queen in this upcoming Met Gala 2020. It's saying that she will be gracing the prestigious event as a guest of her close pal, Vogue UK editor Edward Enifel. And it goes on to say that Edward and Meghan have been plotting this for months. They both have points to prove. Edward wants to show Anna Wintour that she's not the only one with celebrity clout. And then it goes on to say that Meg, of course, wants to give the the middle finger to the establishment that has been, according to her, suffocating her for the last two years, especially since the ban from using Sussex Royal. Meghan's been through hell trying to leave that family. She wants to make a statement even the Queen can't ignore. And they are both, according to this, planning a fashion statement that will go down in history. So her obsession with becoming a queen from when she was a child is still very much in effect. Apparently she didn't know the true succession to the throne. She really thought that she could be voted in or that if she just did more appointments and tried to work harder than Catherine and made herself become more popular than Catherine, that she would somehow be voted in, that she and Harry would be seen to be doing more and would be voted in. So she probably was very disillusioned when she realised that it's not like the US presidency, that you don't get voted in. If this story is true, then it will be interesting to see how far she takes this. She's desperate to wear a crown or a tiara big fight with the Queen over the tiara, Meghan demanding to have the one that she wanted and um, being given the one that the Queen wanted her to have. She's never been to an event as a royal and worn a tiara and even I think it was the Moroccan tour where Prince Charles told her not to wear a tiara to tone it down at the dinner that they were attending. So do you think that this woman will end up wearing her own crown? What do you think? Do you think she's just so desperate to be top dog that she will find something to be queen of? And this next video is Harry and Meghan claim they are bigger than the royal family. And this was published on February the 28th, 2020. So rather than take up those reporters on what they said to Harry, which was, when are you and Meghan going to apologise to your grandmother? She's telling friends, knowing that it will be put out in the news, that if anyone should be insulted, it's us, Meghan says. She says that she and Harry are being picked on and that the restrictions put on them are payback for wanting to be independent, but they will rise above pettiness. So they're accusing the Queen of payback because they wanted to be independent and they are basically saying that the Queen is being petty. Meghan said that they feel like they're being picked on and that the restrictions put on them are payback for wanting to be independent. Also said that she complained to her inner circle of friends last week about the Queen banning them from using the word royal. So we heard that she was incensed about that, so that's not a surprise. And then she issues this statement after this, complaining that the palace was treating them differently to other royal family members. And Meghan said, if anyone should feel insulted, it should be them. To insinuate they were somehow abusing their privileges is absurd, the friend added. She also believes the Queen was under pressure to make those demands because Harry's the Queen's favourite and others just can't deal with it. And it says that Harry is now back in the UK for his last round of engagements as a working royal and that Meghan has no qualms about being in the UK. Shocking that she could be still fighting back against the Queen, knowing that she's in her 90s and her husband, Prince Philip, is not well. And the Queen obviously is concerned about him. So all this that Meghan is putting out there, people are suggesting that Meghan should just zip it. Meghan is receiving the blame from many directions for the cutting of ties with the royal family. Even Meghan's father, Thomas Markle, is speaking out publicly and saying that she has no right to speak to the Queen that way. So it seems as if many people are now feeling that Meghan is still playing the victim. She's saying if anyone should be should feel insulted, it should be them. Another headline is Out of Control Prince Harry Causing a Nightmare for Kate and William. So there are things being said about Meghan 
there is talk that Megan has got something else up her sleeve, that she's planning something, so nothing would surprise me there. One concerning thing is royal sources saying that they can no longer have any control over what Prince Harry does, and that this is causing problems for members of the royal family. What is holding them back? Why do they not have any control any longer? Or is this just being put out there? to throw people off, because remember that Her Majesty has just been to see MI5. So even the papers have been saying that Meghan and Harry have humiliated the Queen, and now it seems that more people are seeing this, and worldwide people are very disappointed in how these two are treating the Queen, because the Queen still holds a lot of respect worldwide by a lot of people. Megan's Megan's friends in the past have said that she does not think things through. She just acts impetuously and I think it's showing now she didn't really know what what was involved with living within the royal family. She had no clue. Some of her friends have been saying that she basically saying that she came into the family and there was nothing that they could give her um, why wasn't she coming in to serve, to have the same attitude as Catherine, you know, wanting to find out what she could actually do to help, not what she could get. Also being said that Megan has told her friends that she's insulted by the palace's petty demands. I don't think they're petty at all, do you? Um, she wasn't expected to do much, but she couldn't do it. She thought that she would be served herself. She thought that she would be wearing jewels and tiaras and going to banquets and cutting the odd ribbon and basically being treated like a queen. She's also been talking lately, allegedly, as though she's actually more powerful than the queen. One concerning thing that was said recently was that Meghan was saying that they are bigger than the royal family that all of this didn't really matter because they basically refused an invitation or they allegedly refused an invitation. We don't know if they actually got one, but they said that they were bigger than that, that they as a couple were bigger than the royal family. They had no need to go to Beatrice's wedding. People are saying how arrogant this is. So Meghan has said different comments to imply that she thinks she's bigger than the Queen. When she first came into the royal family, she was she had a very short period of time where she was trying to appear to learn everything and to follow the Queen's lead. But that was literally five minutes. And then she started to act as if she was equal to the Queen. Very shortly after, she's now now behaving as if they are all powerful and more powerful than the royal family bigger than the royal family in their words. They're losing any respect they've had from many people and their arrogance is there for all to see now. At last, according to the Daily Mail, the Queen has ordered senior palace aides to plan a legal fight back, so it appears that they will no longer be not complaining and no explaining, as they usually do, and most of us thought this day would never happen, but... It seems that it has. She has allegedly told palace officials to lawyer up. I can't imagine her using that term, but who knows, maybe she is. All this because Harry's wife said that an unknown royal had raised concerns over the possible colour of her son's skin before his birth. Now this will give her such a high to know that the palace are fighting back. We've already had someone say that she's addicted to the adrenaline of fighting back in these dangerous situations with the royals and it seems there's no, there are no lengths that she will stop at and now the palace are fighting back. So it does appear that there was a limit as to how far they could be pushed. I just noticed on a news alert come through from the same newspaper, and it's so funny, it's laughable, 
where Omid Scobie is saying that Meghan and Harry naming their daughter Lilibet proves their closeness to the Queen. Doesn't it rather prove their tone deafness? The Daily Mail seems to be following a sort of back and forth with the headlines, and before that one was the Queen letting Prince Andrew keep his military title of Colonel to the Grenadiers. So it's almost like the Palace are speaking to Harry and Meghan through the papers. Palace sources are insisting that the initial conversation which Harry had with the Queen, where he says that he asked her if they could use her name, was an actual telling and not an asking. I cannot believe Omid Scobie. He's saying that their relationship with the Queen is as strong as ever and they have nothing but love for her. Wow. And then he says, so that really gives us an insight into that close relationship. He is as tone deaf as they are. Why would they take out a domain before the child was even born? It was obvious that they were going to use that name regardless. So the male is saying that Omid is re reigniting the row by bringing this up, which I totally agree. Back to the court action, if the palace is lawyering up, then there is no question as to who will win. The thing which concerns them is the upcoming release of Harry's memoirs. According to the Sun newspaper, a preemptive legal warning to the publishers is now being considered. Well, this legal action will show us just how close Pip and Squeak are to the Queen and hopefully leave Mr Scooby with egg on his face. Let me have your thoughts, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Please subscribe, ding my bell for more alerts for more videos, like if you liked it, and share. Bye. So I hope you enjoyed this compilation, especially the newbies, the new subscribers who haven't seen these things before, and some of it might be new to you, some of it might not be. Subscribe to my channel and ding the bell so that you'll receive alerts to the part two of this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.